talk about that moment in 1990 when Nelson Mandela was released from jail. Talk about where you were. You know, we were in Cape Town. I had met with Mrs. Thatcher earlier in the week, making one last appeal for her to for Britain to break with apartheid, and, and she had not, even though America had done so finally. I went and spoke for Reverend Alan Bozak that Sunday morning. We then left thinking that his release was imminent, we went straight to the city hall uh, at Cape Town. And after he was released from Robbins Island and came down the road with Winnie by his side holding hands, he came in the back door of the, uh, of the city hall, and there I was able to greet him. And he said, Jesse Jackson, freedom fighter, and we embraced. He was following our struggle all along. Uh, he saw the 8488 campaigns, for example. He had a, a very sense of appreciation of the freedom fighters versus our government policy. People like Roger Wilkins and, uh, and Randall Robinson and Mary Berry and uh, people like Bill Lucy uh, uh, and Eleanor Holmes Norton, who had led the struggle in our own uh, country in Harry Belafonte. He was acutely aware. And so he just began to talk about those persons because uh, he had a sense that uh, the impact of the American anti-apartheid struggle as we fought apartheid in our own country was a big factor in his release. That was 1990, and he left jail, and he immediately made a world tour, thanking people for supporting uh, the sanctions against the apartheid regime. But this wasn't a victory tour. He was trying to intensify the pressure. Talk about Mandela in America in 1990. You, you know, Mr. Mandela, Madiba. Uh, was graceful because he was winning. Uh, he was not speaking of forgiveness and the like while he was in jail. Uh, but as coming out, he was a winner said, let's, the whites fear retribution and revenge. We choose reconciliation. They want retaliation. We want democracy. He was able to ride that wave to a new level. And he came here really as the guest of the, of the anti-apartheid host. People like Randall Robertson, Trans-Africa, people like Maxine Waters and people like Barbara Lee and, and, and the students who had led the divestment campaigns, because it was not the 1994 that he had the right to vote. Uh, that's when he voted for the first time, and, and Gail was right beside him when he voted uh, for the first time. I think it's fair to say that the American uh, anti party, the anti segregation movement in the South, led by Dr. King, triggered the movement in a big way in South Africa. We got the right to vote in 65. They got the right to vote in 1994, almost 30 years later. Our strength in America was maybe the biggest factor in the strength of that movement succeeding in South Africa. Mm -hmm.